particularly the first generation, it was a blue box, it had lightning bolts, you could build a monster thing, you could build a digger thing. It was positioned in a very particular way. And so the group said, how can we take this same idea, you've got a small computer, you've got four types of input, four types of output, but then you add craft materials. What would happen if you had these technology components and treated them like craft components and added googly eyes and pom-poms and pipe cleaners? What sorts of things could you create? Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, I bring you Mange Cat. I don't know if you can see all the way in the back. Um, so you can create different types of things than the thing you can dig with. So I'm going to fire this up. What do cats like? Cats like to be pet. So when I pet the cat, <laughs> and so again, you know, it expands the range of things you can do. And I've just written a simple program that there's a light, so it's not actually detecting touch. When the light goes below a certain level, it plays a kitten sound. So again, I can make a kitten, I can make a birthday cake, I can make whatever I want. But again, why can't we just treat computational materials like any other sort of creative craft material? And so kids create a wide range of things with the Pico Cricket Kit. This is a commercial kit that's been out in the world. Um, so this was a girl in Taiwan who created light-up shoes with the Pico Cricket Kit. This young man created a jukebox with Pico Crickets. This girl was tired of her brother breaking into her room and reading her diary, so she created a door alarm. <laughs> so no matter what you're creating, you're engaged in a process process that we call in our group the creative learning spiral. And so I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't read this too literally. So there are multiple stages and you can go between them. The idea is it's iterative. These iterative creative design processes. So you start with an idea, you imagine what's possible, you actually engage in building it, you test it out, you share it with a friend, you reflect on your experiences, and then you start all over again. So it's this idea that it's not a, you start, you end, they're just waypoints, things to experiment with. And so this was a picture of a boy at a workshop in Iceland, a Pico Cricket's workshop in Iceland. And so they were charged with, do something interesting with the Pico Cricket kit. And he's like, okay, what is a problem that I face that maybe the Pico Cricket kit could help me with? And he said, well, I have a really hard time getting out of bed in the morning, don't we all? Maybe some people here don't. I, I did this morning. So what did he do? He created an alarm system. So when the light comes in through his window, the light detector senses that, starts up the motor, and it ruffles his hair as a way of getting him out of bed. <laughs> I thought that was really clever. And so he was really excited about it, and he showed his friend. And his friend was like, okay, this is pretty cool. This is working quite nicely. Um, but, you know, we're in Iceland, and it kind of gets dark here in the winter. Uh, so the whole idea of light coming in in the morning isn't going to really work for part of the year. And so he was a little, the creator was a little dejected. And so he went on, he said, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And they had a demo day. And everyone is waiting, you know, taking their turn, showcasing their project. And he's sitting there, and everyone's sort of looking, and it's like, this looks like the same project. And he gets up, and he's got a little blanket over part of the project. And he lifts it up, and right there, at the front of the project, there's a little sign that says, for export only. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a way of dealing with challenges. You know, how do you creatively deal with design challenges? That's just one way. There are other strategies. But no matter what you're doing, you're engaged in this process of designing and creating. So we were really excited by all the things with mind storms and with Pico Crickets, but a challenge of something like this is as soon as you have hardware, it starts to get expensive, right? So the mind storms kit is 250 US dollars. Even this is you know, several hundred US dollars. So we wanted something that would enable a broad section of people to participate. And so obviously, this is a lot of you have seen scratch this page by the, the introduction. So we wanted something as easy as snapping Lego bricks together to be able to create your own games, stories, animations, art. So of those people who have seen Scratch, the application, how many of you have contributed or looked at the website? Okay, that's also a lot of people. Uh, so for those who haven't seen it, there's this website, much like YouTube, where you can share your videos. The Scratch website is a space where people 
people can share their interactive creations. And then any project on the website, you can interact with it, you can view it, you can, there's a social networking piece, you can see how many other people have viewed your project, how many people have loved it. But then a really important part of Scratch, and this is again related back to Kindergarten, we love sharing. So anything that you post on the website, you can download, and it becomes a powerful opportunity to learn from what others have created. So here is that project that we were just looking at on the website. I download it. I can see all the bits and pieces that go into it and all the code. So I wanted to talk a bit about sort of its uptake. So there are more than 800,000 people who have registered for the site. Of those, more than 200,000 have created projects. This is the demographic of Scratch. So we're sort of like, our peak is at like 12, but there's this really long tail of participation. Now some of that is actually adults participating in the Scratch online community. Some of this is self-report, so we have 99-year-olds in the, the Arctic who are you know, using Scratch. But there is an ad active adult community as well participating. People are using Scratch all around the world. It's very popular in England, as in the US, but it's being used elsewhere as well. So these are sort of where it was used last month. And then one last thing about scale, more than 1.8 project, 1.8 million projects have been shared by young people on the website. So there are two new projects on the website every minute. So if you ever have some time on your hands, <laughs> the Scratch website always has some new content for you. So a question I'm often asked is, 